So alright guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to build your own Blue Retro Control to OGX360. Now for those of you that never heard of either of these two projects, essentially a Blue Retro lets you use any Bluetooth controller with a wide range of retro consoles. Unfortunately, a Blue Retro does not work with the original Xbox, however some mad lads found out how to make the Blue Retro firmware spit out commands over I2C that the OGX360 will support. And for those of you that never heard of what an OGX is, it's a way to adapt newer controllers on the original Xbox, usually through a USB pass-through. Originally building an OGX and having to get various Bluetooth USB adapters would cost you a pretty penny overall. However, with this particular setup, this is fairly cheap and you can build multiple of these things for like nothing. But with that said, how do we go about actually building one of these? What hardware requirements are there? Well, first of all, you're gonna need a level shifter unless you plan to modify the Arduino Pro Micro to not need one. It's a fairly difficult mod to do and I don't recommend it overall because if one of these fail, it's much easier just to pull it out and put a new one in versus having to pull it out, remodify another one and put it back in. So just get the level shifter, then get an Arduino Pro Micro and last but not least, we're going to need an ESP32. I'll be sure to link to all these parts down below in the description for those of you that just want to click a link and go buy it. Other than that, you're going to need some firmware. Now, the particular project I'm following is the Con Welk Tour Blue Retro Setup. On screen is his GitHub, and in my instructions, I will link to it heavily. If you run into any issues with my particular backup, head over to this GitHub page, and it will have everything you need to update your setup, or perhaps even ask for help in fixing what might be going wrong. But yeah, I'm mainly making this video in case that GitHub ever went down. That way, there's always going to be a personal backup that I have of this particular project. Also, it makes following along in video format a lot easier. So what I recommend you to do is just download my personal backup. It will be in the description below. Once you have it downloaded, extract it, and it should look something like this. Now, since I already have my Arduino Pro Micro in, we're going to start with that because it's a little harder to program compared to the ESP32. There's a little bit more setup involved. So what I'm going to do is double click and open the Arduino Pro Micro firmware folder and if you download my zip you'll also see an instructions file here. This will explain things beat for beat for what you need to do. With my particular Arduino Pro Micro there is no onboard reset button so as you can see in my instructions here it will instruct you to short out reset and ground to get it in the correct mode to flash. But before we do that we need to open up the device manager so you could do that just by right clicking the start button and hitting a device manager and in here you want to open up the port section as you can see I got a few ports already available but none of those are my Pro Micro to have your Arduino Pro Micro show up you need to make sure it's plugged into your computer through a micro USB that supports data some micro USBs don't have data input so be sure to get a good quality cable once you have your Pro Micro plugged in what you need to do is take a thin small wire and short out reset and ground. Your computer will beep and the device manager should automatically refresh. If it does not automatically refresh, just click on the scan for hardware changes. But as you saw, my device was listed as COM13. It will only stay active for a couple seconds, so just take note of that number. Be sure to write it down somewhere where you won't forget. Now I'm going to close out of the device manager just to free up some room on the screen and in here we want to open up the OGX360 folder. What we need to do now is right click the program.bat and hit edit. In here you'll see a dash P section and your port number. If this does not match your specific port where your Pro Micro is located, be sure to change the number to match whatever the port was that came up earlier in the device manager. In my case, my Pro Micro was on COM13, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now you can just double click this program button, but I don't recommend it. I'm going to actually open this up in a terminal, so let me open a PowerShell here. You can actually uh, 
open up a PowerShell in the current folder directory just by holding shift on your keyboard and uh, click open PowerShell window here. Now I'm just going to type in CMD, clear the screen, and I'm going to type in program.bat. I'm not going to hit enter yet, but the reason why I suggest to open this up in a uh, terminal is so that you could see the output. It, it will tell you if things worked correctly versus if you just double click this, you won't get any verbose output and you won't know if it flashed or not. But believe it or not, we're almost done and ready. All we have to do now is short the reset and ground pin again and quickly hit enter in our terminal. Oop, there we go. Hit enter. And if you did everything correctly, you will see the AVR dude tool go and flash our pro micro. And that is it. Everything is done. It even says thank you. And now we can close out of the PowerShell window. From here, we can unplug our Arduino Pro Micro if we wanted to, but if you want to see if everything worked, you can go back over to the Device Manager section, and it should show up under Other Devices, and it should be called Unknown. In my particular case, it's not going to show up as that because I installed a driver, and I think it shows up under Video Game Controllers now. I don't really remember. But either way, that is it. We can now back out into the root folder here and open up the ESP32 firmware folder. If you haven't, you can already unplug your Arduino Pro Micro. We are done with it. I also recommend closing out of the other instructions just to not confuse yourself. But yeah, now what you need to do is open up this instruction file and it will ask you to do the same thing. Basically look for the port that the ESP32 is on. This is a lot easier because you don't have to push a button for it to show up. So just plug your ESP32 in, then right click the start button, open device manager, and go down to ports. It should show up in there as like CHUART bridge. And yes it does. As you see mine shows up as COM14. So be sure to note your port number down just like before, write it down if you have to, and then you can close out of the device manager. Now I'm going to close out of the instructions text file here because we're not going to really need that either. You just really need to follow what these two pictures say. I got these from the GitHub uh, page, but essentially you need to open up the program in the ESP2 firmware folder, flash download tool, and give it a second to load. When it finally loads, you just got to fill it out just like these two pictures state, then hit start. So we're flashing an ESP32 in developer mode, so be sure to change the chip type to ESP32, develop, and hit OK. Now in here, if your device isn't automatically picked up as you saw mine is not, be sure to change the COM port to the correct COM that we saw earlier. In my case, it was COM14. So now for step two here, we just need to fill everything out like so. So to do this, you just got to click on the three dots next to the text input field. Then you can navigate to where those uh, files are located. Be sure to put them in in exactly the same order. I mean, you don't have to, but you do need to get the at sign and the hexadecimal in correctly. So I'm just going to go through it in order. So we're going to start with our bootloader.bin, give it a second to load that. And then I want to type in that hex there, 0x, 1, 2, 3. You need to make sure you type this correctly, by the way, and when you're done typing it in, be sure to click the little checkbox here. Then you can move on to the next one and repeat that process. All right, now that I got those all typed in and filled out, all we need to do is make sure the rest of the inputs match, that you're on 40 megahertz DIO, and then we can actually just hit start. Also, really make sure you're on the correct port before you hit start. Anyway, everything matches up, so I'm just going to hit start, and that should be it. It will take a minute. You'll have some verbose output here in the back if you wish to just watch it go. But yeah, when this is done, that is everything flashed and set up. Your ESP32 should be good to go, and your Arduino Pro Micro should also be good to go.
If you want to, you flash as many Arduino Pro Micros as you personally want to use. In the case of the Xbox, you have four controller ports, so if you want to have all four controller ports hooked up, you'd need to flash four Arduino Pro Micros. But as you saw, it's really not that difficult to do and get done. But with that said, once the ESP32 has been flashed, you can actually just close out of the window and unplug the ESP32. However, if you want to make sure the ESP32 is good to go, what you can actually do is, while you still have it plugged in, of course, go over to the Blue Retro IO uh, webpage, click on Advanced, well, you can click on any category, then hit Connect Blue Retro. If your Blue Retro is working, it should show up in here as an OGX. I just had to unplug and replug it, but as you see, Blue Retro OGX is asking to pair. And that is it, our ESP32 is 100% configured correctly. Now if you're wondering, all you have to do is wire everything up as per the diagram in the folder if you downloaded my personal backup. Now the diagram should look something like this. If your ESP32 can just be powered with 3.3 volts, then you can just use that. However, in my particular case, I had to hook up to the high voltage line here and plug directly into my 5 volts VN. If I didn't do that, the ESP32 would not boot. There's a good chance it's just the wire length going to my console. There is one thing to note if you plan to build your own version of this. Keep the wires going from the micro C port to the original Xbox, Xbox port really short. Just like with my N64 ESP32 build, I ran into an issue with the cable length, and this is prevalent here as well. Other than that, as you see the diagram for wiring this thing is really not that difficult. You basically hook up pins 2 and 3 on each of your Arduino Pro micros, and they each all go to the same exact to uh, spots on the level shifter than to the ESP32. You kind of have to ground certain pins though, in this case if you want one player A2 and A1 in ground, that will designate this as player 1. And then you have to do the same for player 2, in this case A1 in ground, and so on and so forth. But with that said, if you build one and you get it working, down below in the description I'll also have a 3D printed enclosure. If you're using this standard sized, full sized proto board, it's pretty much a snap fit. All you have to do is solder everything to the board, put the board in, put the wires in, and you can use reclaimed screws. I'm using reclaimed screws from my original Xbox hard drive holder. It's currently a toolless setup, so I don't even need the screws, so they're perfect for a project like this to hold it all together. As of the making of this dub, I have not printed the case, however you guys will be the very first to see it, so I hope it comes out pretty good and I will talk about it more in a future video. But with that said, as you see on screen, it works pretty well. This whole setup feels no different than if I were to use a Bluetooth controller on my Xbox One or my PS4. The only problems I've ran into are problems of my own making, my cables are just way too long. So everything is kind of having a hard time being powered. What I have to do is plug the cable into my console and then I have to plug in a power bank, I mean, to turn it on. Then once it's fully on I can unplug the power pack and it just works. However, hopefully by the time I get the 3D printed case done and everything, you know, finally assembled and put together perfectly. I won't need to do that janky kind of solution again. But yeah, so far no issues with this whole setup. I've played through Halo just fine a few times actually with this, and I've used both Xbox and PS4 remotes and a Switch remote. However, I did have issues with one PS4 remote. In this case, it's a gold remote. I'm not sure if there's something special with this. It could just be that the gold remote needs to be charged a bit more. I'm not too sure but it vibrates then shuts off and it doesn't actually stay connected like my black remote does. That threw me off for a while and I thought maybe something wasn't working, but it turned out it was just that one particular remote for some reason. But yeah guys, I really hope this video helped you out and if you are wondering, yes I will probably do a Linux tutorial as well. I only did this under Windows just to make the project a little more simple and the fact is Con Welktor, the person that came up with this particular build, did everything under Windows, 
So the tools just kind of work out of box. And when I tried to flash some of the same files over under Linux and compile my own builds, they would run into issues and wouldn't communicate with each other. I don't know why. However, with the pre-compiled files he had for Windows, they worked flawlessly. But yeah, with that said, I'm going to leave today's video off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. With that said, some things need to be addressed. I'm not going to be using Chimp to clone a drive. However, it's set up for the CDI, the Genesis, the NES, the N64, and Arcade.